Did everybody hear me? Yeah. All right, fantastic. Uh, guys, I just left Guilford County, and after I leave here, we're going to. Where are we going when we leave here? <laughs> Governor's Mansion. <laughs> Marx's gospel, 
the Democratic Party's gospel, but he's not teaching Jesus Christ's gospel. Come on. same-sex marriage and abortion. Come on. Nothing moral in that. Tired of these people taking the image and likeness of Jesus Christ and liking it to some political platform. It's not about politics. When I mention his name, it's not about politics. It's about his power. Come on, it's about his wisdom. It's about his principles. And I am sorry as I can be if it just happens that we need one side of the aisle that are pushing those things. See, because when I went to Washington, D.C., when I went to Washington, when they first invited me, I thought to myself, oh, should I go to Washington, D.C.? You know, I'm going up there and standing from, sitting in front of a bunch of congressmen. I'm going to go there. And then they told me I was going to be the only Republican witness out of three. Sitting there beside a presidential candidate. What's his name? Uh, Julian Castro. Didn't he run for president for about 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> sitting here beside this guy that's known all over the country. Uh, well, I wasn't sitting beside him. He was, he was there and, uh, by a video of uh, William Barber. Then I was sitting in front of a number of Congress people. Jerry Nadler and Chairman, uh, Chairman Mao, I mean uh, Cohen. <laughs> and, Representative Lee from Texas, Shirley Jackson Lee from Texas. I was sitting in front of these people who think they are Chinese. And I knew I'd be sitting in front of them. Six o'clock in the morning when we were doing prep for this thing, I was sitting in the hotel lobby with my staff. My chief counsel looked at me and he said, sir, are you ready? I looked at him and I said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I have my sack of stones, and I have my slingshot right there. <laughs> I saw this last week in Gilbert County. This on April 3rd when I gave that speech. What you saw on that speech, what 250-some million people saw during that speech, was me on fire, pointing, and that's what they saw. Here's what you did not see. You didn't see me from the waist down. And I, when I say this, I say this in all seriousness. This is what I was doing from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> I was shaking from the waist down like Elvis Presley on methamphetamine. <laughs> <laughs> and I was shaking because I still had this nervousness, this nervousness inside of me. I did not realize what was going on. I knew God was with me, but I did not know what kind of ride he was about to take me on. I didn't know whether or not he was about to take me on a thrilling ride, or that oh boy, that was great, or if he was about to take me on a ride to jail. <laughs> I had no idea. So there was nervousness, there was trepidation, I didn't know. But since then, I've learned something. Since then, I've learned something. That I am not walking on this political walk for the purpose of politics. I'm not walking this political walk, fighting this political fight for the purposes of winning an election. Let me say that to you again. And let me be, let me be, let me have this be the first time I've said it. I don't care about winning a political election. I don't care. Because when I get to the other side, Come on, bro. God is not going to strike off wins and losses politically. He's going to strike off wins and losses for him. Those things are not political. See, that is part of the problem that we have to watch. And why we are so frustrated now. Because we believe what we are fighting for are political causes. They are not. Your children in the classroom are not a political cause. They are your legacy. They are your God-given legacy. They're not something to be argued about or bargained with in Congress or in Rome. They are something that you should fight for through the will of God to maintain 
and raised to a high standard. Our right to keep and bear arms, to protect ourselves, that's not a political cause. We should not be turning that over to old man Bob Wire Joe up in Washington, D.C. <laughs> While I'm here in the newspaper meeting, if you're here hiding somewhere with the recording, again, get it right. Get the quote right. I don't care what Joe Biden says. I don't care what Washington, D.C. says. I don't care what Congress says. I don't care what the Senate says. I have my guns. I'm keeping my guns. You won't get my guns until you drive out of my coat here. American community it was a wake-up call 